guys, I'm recording my postpartum experience again because by the end of that video I was super tired. I actually had really bad brain fog and I missed out a fair few details. For me this is where things affected me a little bit more. The aftercare at my hospital is definitely in need of some improvement. I'm not sure if it was just the pandemic or whether this is just how things are in general at this hospital, but I feel like midwives should be aware that quality aftercare counts too. And unfortunately, I don't feel like I was lucky enough to get this. It did affect me and it still affects me to this day. I spent six very long days in hospital and I'm sure it would have been way more days in hospital if my mum hadn't have assisted with my self-discharge. I can barely remember the first day and night, so I have used my hospital notes to try and help me to piece this one together. There is a breastfeeding support team at my hospital, however, I had very little support in this area and I don't feel like it was very easily accessible to me. I had to beg every day for breastfeeding support and the first day I even shouted at a midwife for ignoring my request of breastfeeding support. Dexter had not fed at all since his first feed. He was super drowsy, super upset and he struggled with a lot of excess fluid in his tummy due to being a c-section baby. I was very concerned because he sounded like he was constantly choking and I couldn't get to him. I begged and begged and begged for support with getting him to latch but he was super fussy and we ended up feeding him the syringes of colostrum that I had taken to the hospital. The support wasn't great. She just grabbed my boob and tried to shove it in his mouth and tried to shove his head towards it. So no wonder he didn't want to feed. At 4 p.m. on the same day as my C-section, the doctor was bleeped due to my pulse being 142 beats per minute. At 5 p.m. I had more bloods taken, they performed an ECG and then from then on I had observations every half an hour. The next day in the morning I had informed the midwife that my cannula was covered in blood and it was leaking. It wasn't cleaned until around 1pm after I had spoken to several midwives about it and the anaesthetist. As she came to see how I was doing, I asked her if it looked like my cannula had slipped out of my arm slightly. It was eventually removed at 9.40pm after pointing out to the midwife she just put my antibiotics in the drip and I showed her that it was leaking down my arm and she just decided to remove it. At 11 a.m. the day after my C-section, I had more blood taken and my catheter was removed and then I was helped out of the bed to stand and take a few steps around the room, which was super painful and I don't recommend having a C-section if you can 100% avoid to have one, then avoid it because the recovery is not very pleasant. I explained to the midwife that morning that I felt really, really poorly and her response to me was, well, you need to eat something. And I had been eating, but the hospital portions are diabolical. They give you a jacket potato the size of a baby potato with a tablespoon of beans and that's supposed to fill you up for the entire day. Ben was sent home at 12 p.m. and was not allowed to return to the hospital, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. When he'd been there for over 24 hours at this point, he hadn't left the room. And for the rest of my hospital stay, there were midwives congregating in the hallway without masks on, not social distancing. There were midwives coming into my room without masks and PPE on. Just before he left, a midwife came into my room and told me that I would be moved later that evening to a ward with other women. Considering I had only just been mobilised like an hour before she came and told me this, that I was going to be moving because another lady needed the room that I was in. They shouldn't have put me in that room if they knew they needed it for somebody else. I was quite poorly. 
I hadn't slept for about four or five days again and they expected me to be on a ward with other women and other babies. I think I probably wouldn't have minded so much if I had had a normal birth and had probably had some sleep and wasn't going to end up being there for several days. However, this didn't happen anyway. I had the midwife came back in the room later that evening and said that plans had changed and I would be moved in the morning. And then I wasn't moved anyway, so I got to stay in the room that I was in, thankfully. Throughout the day and night, I'd called the midwife on several occasions. Several different midwives came into my room. So I found myself having to constantly explain my concerns for my son. I was concerned that he wasn't feeding, he sounded like he was choking, I couldn't get to him quick enough and nobody was really listening to me till around 1am when another midwife came into the room. This time it really did sound like he was properly choking so she ran over to him and picked him up because I was panicking and as she picked him up he threw up all over her green mucusy vomit and from that point, she called some doctors in to come and check him out. The doctors came in, they took him out of the room to examine him, I'm not sure why, but they took him out of the room. And so one of the doctors came back in the room, knelt down by the side of the bed, took my hand and explained that they suspected my son had meningitis. They needed to take him to special care put him on antibiotics, take some bloods and perform a lumbar puncture. So when they left the room, I was left in the room on my own without my baby. I tried to get hold of Ben to explain what was going on, but at this point it was like 2am in the morning and I couldn't get through to his phone. So I rang my mum's landline because I needed to speak to somebody about what was going on. I was upset, I felt very alone, I was concerned, I wasn't allowed to have any visitors. So it was scary being in hospital on my own and having all of this go on. I felt like I needed to talk to somebody close to me and have support from somebody close to me. So I rang my mum, she was very reassuring and then around 3am a midwife came into my room, I was very upset and she took me over to see Dexter in special care. They expected me to walk but it was very painful, I probably only got halfway down the hallway before they had to get me a wheelchair and wheel me the rest of the way. My room was also like right round the back of the hospital so it was quite a long walk to special care, especially if you've had a c-section. And so I got to special care and he was in his own little room. He was all wired up and had antibiotics going into him. He'd had his blood taken by this point. They were not going to perform the lung puncture until the next day. So I ended up spending about an hour, hour and a half with him before I started to feel quite poorly myself and needed to get somebody to take me back to my room. So I came back to my room at around 4.30 a.m. and I was finally shown how to use the breast pump. So I pumped for around 20 minutes and then I was going to try and get some sleep. However, someone came into my room to take more bloods. So then around 8 a.m. a midwife came into my room and I was actually on the phone to my mum I needed to see if she could get hold of Ben because I still couldn't get hold of him and as I was on the phone to her a midwife came into my room and as she came into my room I don't think she really realised that I was on, my, on the phone to my mum but she spoke to me like I wasn't actually meant to be on the phone at all to anybody. Obviously I felt like I needed some support from somebody close to me. I was super anxious, I felt super ill and I was super super concerned about Dexter. I wasn't allowed any visitors because of Covid and I just felt very alone and just like I needed to talk to somebody that was close to me and not a midwife who 
is a complete stranger to me. So she made me feel very wrong for being on the phone, which I was not happy about, but I continued to call my mum and Ben whenever I needed to speak to them. Then my mum got in contact with Ben's parents and Ben's dad came round to the flat and woke him up and got him to call me. So I explained to Ben on the phone what had happened, what was going on, etc. And that I would keep him posted as soon as I knew anything. At quarter past nine, the midwife came back into my room to help me down to the shower, to have a shower. She took my dressing off and helped me to get dressed. And then she took me to special care to see Dexter before his lumbar puncture. So I was actually able to pick him up and have cuddles with him as he wasn't like hooked up to the machine that was monitoring his heart and breathing and stuff. So I was able to have a cuddle with him for a couple of hours and then I started to feel quite poorly. And so I came back to my room to try and get some rest. I tried to have a little nap, had some lunch, and then around 1 p.m. I had no updates about how Dexter was doing. So I called the buzzer a midwife support worker came in and I just explained to her that my son was in special care, he was due to have a lumbar puncture and I hadn't heard any updates on whether he'd had it, how he was doing, whether they knew anything yet. So I had to request someone to come and see me and explain what was going on, which again I think is really poor because I was obviously very concerned about my son and you'd think that someone would have came into my room and updated me. Shortly after I requested someone did finally come into my room from special care and explained that he'd had his lumbar puncture and then he informed me that he had given my son a dummy which I was not too happy about. They were I was pumping colostrum but they were feeding him formula. I was not overly happy about either of those but that's just how things went they gave him a dummy and formula without my consent i would have appreciated them asking me first before giving him these things but they didn't so that was another thing that i was quite disappointed about around 5 p.m i had spoken to the midwife about how poorly and weak i was feeling she explained to me that my iron levels were very low, I was anemic. They finally put me on an iron supplement but it made me very 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 sick and in the end, like a couple of days later, I was super super sick and I decided to just not take it. But we had sat and discussed my infection and all I was told was that they didn't know what this infection was. They were going to keep taking bloods to check whether the antibiotics were working because I wanted to know why they kept coming in and taking bloods from me because it was literally twice a day every day I was having my bloods taken. On the 13th of May a midwife came into my room with a Covid swab that she had already opened and taken out of the packet before she asked me to consent to having a Covid test. So I told her that I didn't want to have a Covid test, I didn't have any symptoms of Covid, I didn't think that I needed to have a Covid test and she stood by my bed and made me feel very guilty about refusing to take this Covid test. She said I think it's really important for the sake of your son that you have this test and so I felt like I didn't have a choice basically and ended up agreeing to have the COVID test done. Even though I had already declined a COVID test when I first went into hospital during my labour, a different midwife asked me to take a COVID test. She said, it's your choice, you don't have to, but we would recommend that you do. And I already declined having that test but this particular midwife was not going to leave my room unless I had it. She'd already opened it, so she wasn't going to let it go to waste. 
but I never actually heard the results from that COVID test either, so I'm guessing it was negative, but they never came to tell me whether it was positive or negative. I think that was quite rude as well. And I know most of you watching this are probably like, why wouldn't you just take the COVID test? But at that point in time, I just didn't feel like I needed to take one. With things like that, I feel like if I had symptoms, then I would take a COVID test, but I didn't have any symptoms. And I know you can be asymptomatic, et cetera, et cetera. But it was just my personal choice that I didn't want to have this test. So nobody had came in and checked my wound for me since the dressing was removed. So on the 13th of May, as the day kind of like went on, it started to feel like it was burning. It started to feel quite hot and like it was burning. So I called the buzzer and asked a midwife to have a look at it for me. She then called a doctor in to just have a little look and they thought that I had possible cellulitis. The skin was like quite inflamed. So the doctor drew on me with a pen to just make sure that it wasn't spreading as they thought that it was possibly infected. They thought it was cellulitis. So that was that. But every time I needed to have my c-section checked or i felt like i needed someone to look at it it reassured me to have someone check it and make sure that it wasn't getting worse and stuff so you would think that someone would check it anyway on a regular basis however they didn't and i had to beg them to check my wound and then you would think after discovering that i had possible cellulitis that they would want to keep an eye on it but they didn't i had to ask somebody every time someone came in my room i had to ask them to have a look at my c-section for me most of the time while i was in hospital i was pretty much left on my own they only really came in to do observations or to give me medication or to take bloods i did have a really lovely midwife support worker who popped in to see me quite often and chatted with me and helped me with dexter when i was allowed to have him in my room the last home birth midwife who was with me who transferred me to hospital i had her come and spend a whole day with me one day when i was in and she actually taught me to cup feed. She was probably the most support I'd had breastfeeding wise because she encouraged me to pump. She took all of the pump parts, washed, sterilized them and brought them back to me constantly throughout the day. And then she taught me to cup feed Dexter. She tried to help me with latching, but Dexter was quite fussy and didn't want to. So we just continued with the cup feeding and pumping for quite a while. She gave me some tips though on how to get him to latch when we leave hospital because I think the environment and Dexter was probably picking up on everything that he just didn't want to feed. And I also think that special care were overfeeding him. He was very refluxy. He had a lot of stomach pain he didn't really want to feed he was very full up and i noticed that they were feeding him quite a lot of formula very often and it was quite clear that he didn't really want it and he was getting overfed basically because also by day five he had gained 200 grams so by the time we left the hospital he'd gained 200 grams he was already a big baby so it's not like he needed to overfeed or anything so i'm not really sure why they were doing that or whether it's just a policy that they were doing i was quite upset because the special care nurse that spent the majority of time with dexter during the day like coming in and out to do bloods and stuff and give him antibiotics she was quite bitchy she also had a go at me for shortening my son's name which i found really bizarre because i was kind of like well he's my baby does it really matter if i call him dexter or dexy she was like well we call him dexter in in special care i was like well yeah <laughs> and <laughs> that's his name um but yeah there was one day that 
I was given two pots of medicine that looked and tasted and smelled exactly the same. So I refused to take them. I called the midwife in and said, I think you've given me two pots of the same medicine. And um, she was very rude and basically accused me of lying because unfortunately I had taken one and then there was the other one left that I refused to take and she was like, well, um, it's up to you whether you take it or not, but we wouldn't have given you two pots of the same medicine. So there was a bit of a fiasco there. My bin in the bathroom was overflowing and not changed for several days. On day five, it's quite common to be quite emotional because you have like a surge in hormones and it can make you quite emotional by that day. However, I had a very bitchy midwife accuse me of being postnatally depressed. She then got a mental health midwife in to talk to me. I sat and spoke with the mental health midwife. I told her everything that had happened since the day I went into labour, right down to Dexter being taken to special care, right down to me feeling very alone and homesick in the hospital with no visitors and she didn't think I was postnatally depressed at all. She agreed that by day five it's normal to be very emotional and especially in my situation where you know I hadn't really had the birth that I'd hoped for. My son was taken to Skaboo and basically hardly ever with me. Breastfeeding wasn't going very well and I hadn't got very much support with it and the fact that I was not able to have any visitors. My husband was sent home. I was homesick. All I wanted to do was come home and be with my rabbit and be with my baby and be home with people that do care about me, do support me and, you know, would help me with Dexter. I would be able to take some different iron supplements that agree with my stomach better and I was just super fed up. I'd asked every single day to go home and I was always told, oh yeah, she can go home tomorrow. Not sh really sure why they said I could go home tomorrow every day. At least three members of staff at the hospital I found extremely unprofessional. So I had two special care workers and at least one midwife who came into my room, heard my son screaming and left the room, rushed out of the room covering their ears. And I feel like that's extremely unprofessional. If you don't like hearing babies screaming, why the hell are you doing this job? Because babies cry. And my son did suffer really quite severely with colic and not only that, but he also had a lot of pain in his neck and stuff from being tilted in my womb, which again, I'll get into later because that comes after we left the hospital. But I do feel like my son was in a lot of pain with his stomach and his neck and his back, and I'll explain further in a bit. Oh god, Dexter's awake. So on the 16th of May, that morning, I asked the midwife that came into my room because this was the day that Dexter was being discharged from special care. So he'd had all of his antibiotics, they were happy to discharge him, but he was not going to be discharged until 5pm that evening. So that morning, the midwife that came into my room, I had said to her, I would like to self-discharge because I no longer need to be in the hospital. My baby's being discharged from special care and I would like to go home with my son and be with people that can support me. The midwife then said, but you've got sepsis, haven't you? And I looked at her and said, I'm sorry, but nobody's told me that I've got sepsis at all. All I know is that I've got an infection. I've asked several times what 
the infection is, or what they know about the infection, and every time I've been told that they don't know anything, and now you're telling me that I've got sepsis. She said, we need to take a blood test before you go home to make sure you're on the right path to recovering. However, nobody actually came in my room to do that blood test, and they did actually end up discharging me without the blood test, without my antibiotics, which I did ask for. I had said, that I hadn't had all of my antibiotics yet. I was meant to just take a seven day course and I'd only been there for six days. However, the midwife said to me that, oh, and this is from when they put me on the antibiotics as well, which was the day after my C-section. So I had at least two days left of antibiotics. However, he's just opened the door. Dexter, can you come in here? However, they said that they'd looked at my paperwork and said I'd had all of my antibiotics. I hadn't, I'd only been there six days and I'd only had about five days worth of antibiotics at this point. Dexter, come see me. Oh, let me just go again. Oh, this is my son, Dexter. Sorry, he's just woken up from his nap, so. Dexter's gonna help me finish the video because I'm nearly done. So they discharged me without my antibiotics. And then 10 weeks later, I still had, I'm so sorry that he's playing with the tripod. So this is gonna be a really awkward end to my video. And yes, 10 weeks later, I still had the infection and ended up on more antibiotics. But luckily I was able to stay home for that. I didn't have to go back into hospital or anything. So I was able to stay home and I was happy about that because I don't want to be back in this hospital ever again, really. So we've gone for a different angle because Dexter keeps going for the tripod. I'm sorry about the mess in the background. This is toddler life. My mum helped me to self-discharge because I think they wanted to keep me in hospital because of the infection. So my mum actually helped me to discharge on the 16th. She actually rang the hospital up. So I'd rang my mum after I'd had this conversation with the midwife about me having sepsis. I was absolutely distraught because I thought that they weren't gonna discharge me or let me self-discharge. In the end, my mum ended up ringing the hospital and said, I will be picking my daughter and my grandson up at 5 p.m. Please make sure that you have her ready to leave because I won't be leaving the hospital without her. So thankfully, another midwife came into my room and reluctantly filled out my discharge papers. I finally got to leave the hospital that evening and we got home, we settled in quite well at home, and Dexter finally latched for the first time since he first fed in hospital, so I was quite emotional about that. I was really happy he finally latched and had some breast milk. So then when Ben had to go back to work after paternity leave, my mum came to help out with Dexter for a couple of weeks until I'd started to feel better with my c-section because i could not lift him up i was told by a physiotherapist at the hospital not to lift anything heavier than seven pounds and i looked at her and was like i've just had a 10 pound baby so yeah i had my mum here to help just pass him to me when he needed nursing majority of the time i was just basically sat on the sofa with a breastfeeding pillow with him on me but it was quite painful so i did kind of need to have a break with him not laying on my stomach because it was very painful so my mum was here to help with that and to cook some food for me and to like do some things around the flat which was really helpful. I ended up writing a letter of complaint to the hospital and I eventually got a reply and eventually got invited to a birth reflections appointment which I didn't really find that helpful because um, I went in to speak with the consultant that I had during my pregnancy and she was happy to talk me through what actually happened during my birth. 
she didn't want to talk to me about my postpartum stay which i had told her affected me more than my birth because a lot a lot of the things that happened and i don't think the pandemic helped i don't think the fact that i wasn't allowed visitors or my husband there what happened with dexter etc i think it was just a combination of everything that i really struggled with and um i really wanted to be able to speak with her about that but i was rushed out of the door as soon as she got to my postpartum notes she closed them up and essentially rushed us out of the door she didn't want to talk to me about that part at all she just basically said it looks like you had a rough time yes i did have a rough time and i really would have appreciated speaking about it and clearing up some of the issues in my letter of complaint however they didn't want to talk to me about it so um, i did end up writing another letter and then i got a response from you took all the books out did you and then i got a response from the head midwife that i picked apart because um a lot of it was incorrect and it felt like she was trying to blame me for a lot of what i went through so i did i need to respond to that but i haven't just yet because i've been struggling with a lot of the feelings surrounding my postpartum experience and a couple of the things that did happen during my labour as well. So I apologise about the toys. We're going to try a different angle because my child is trying to get the tripod and I just really want to get this video finished and edited and uploaded for you all. I just wanted to end by saying that my birth wasn't everything that I had hoped for. My postpartum experience wasn't everything that I'd hoped for. My recovery was super, super, super hard. So I'm not gonna lie to you on that front. It's not easy, but you will get through it and everything will be fine in the end. I do feel like COVID and the pandemic has had a major impact on how we were treated in hospital. Uh, not just me, but like several other women and their partners. I also feel for our partners as well because it's not been easy for them either. I don't think it was fair for us to be alone in hospital. I think they could have gone a totally different way about around that because I, I think a lot of the things during lockdown, because I think things have eased slightly now, I'm not so sure obviously because I've not really been following what is going on now. However, oh my goodness, I will get this video finished. I'm so sorry about Dexter in the background and the mess in the background. Just ignore, ignore it. <laughs> I just feel like there are different measures that they could have taken to allow partners to be with us when we needed them with us, basically. Whether that was the start of your labour, whether you were induced and you deserve to have somebody with you. I think they could have taken everybody's temperature before you went into the hospital. They could have made sure that people weren't leaving their rooms, etc. There's just loads of other ways that they could have handled this. And I do want to stress the importance of that because it has affected so many women and so many of our partners as well. So if you made it this far, thank you so, so much for listening to my story. If you are pregnant, I hope that your birth goes exactly the way that you hope it will go and i wish you all the luck with your pregnancy and your labor and birth please leave me a comment and a like if you enjoyed this three-part series about my pregnancy labor and birth during the covid pandemic and please share your stories with me how your experiences went i'd love to hear from you and i'll see you in my next video thank you so much for listening The monitor. We can't play with the monitor, can we? The monitor's not a toy, baby. The monitor's not a toy. The monitor's not a toy. <laughs> right, shall we say bye bye? Can you wave? Bye.